Hey, this is Mark, and today I'm going to be working on yet another iPhone 6 long screw damage. Uh, this one, unlike the others in previous videos, has damage in the center hole and this hole on the right. But this one's fine, and, and this is typically the one that is damaged. Um, I guess because the long screw is the one that goes in here. Um, so, you know, when people are laying their screws out, these left ones are the most likely to get swapped. Um, but this, <laughs> this has long screw damage in two different holes, um, which tells me that uh, this tech really had his screws messed up and he damaged this hole first. He put the long screw in this one first and that caused the phone to boot with no image. And then in troubleshooting that and disconnecting the screen, connecting a different screen, he mixed the screw up again and damaged this hole. Um, and I, I very often see where they've gone and, you know, why the hell not? Let's damage this one too. Um, luckily that's not the case here. Uh, this is actually the most difficult one to repair, and this is by far the easiest. Uh, and this one is pretty much like a 5S. Like, I could do it with one eye and one hand tied behind my back. Um, maybe not. Uh, Alright, so... First step is always to pull this bracket off. And I guess I'll go ahead and pull them both off um, and just peel back that bottom right, uh, you know, the ground layer on top, just to show that there isn't any real damage there. I'm pretty sure there isn't. The center one, um, what happens is there's a 1.8 volt line there that gets shorted to ground because of the, uh, the copper, the top ground plane, getting like jammed down into the into this line and, and just shorting it to ground. Um, and that 1.8 line is necessary to power the LCD and display an image. Uh, so once that is gone, once it's shorted to ground, you get no image. I'm just going to wick off the solder on these bracket pads. It'll make it a lot easier to peel that top layer of the board away. Jeez, I don't know if the microphone on this camera can pick it up, but I really feel for my wife right now. I can hear our new daughter screaming in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear that too, but I've yep, got a brand new addition to the family just about two weeks ago. Fiona. All right. Where did I put my scalpel? There it is. All right, so I guess I'll, I'll start with this just because it's easy. And I don't think I'm going to actually have to do any work here. So I, I always score the board like that so that I can control, you know, where the edge of what I'm peeling ends very easily. Um, I need to get that in better focus. There we go. So I would be worried if this area was like spongy right here, but it's really not. So I don't think there's a lot of delamination. And I, I don't think that that top layer is grounding into the traces below it, but it could be. There are traces under there. Man, Fiona's really going at it. Yeah, see? It... it created an in indention, indentation, um, you know, it, but it, it didn't actually pierce all the way down. You can't see any copper. 
Um, so I'm going to leave that be. I'm just going to clean this up. Leave it alone. It's fine. I'm still not going to put that bracket back because, um, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the place this phone is from only has one repair shop in the town. Um, and, you know, the guy that did this is going to be the only possible source of the next repair. So I'm going to do him a favor and save him from himself and not give him the option of mixing up the screws in this particular phone. You won't be able to put a screw there at all. <laughs> I'm revoking your screw privileges, guy. Whoever you are. Alright, so I... I don't need to... That's just habit scoring the board like that. I don't actually need to cut that much out. If it was spongy again, then I would definitely want to do that. Um, but that, that was just a case of me kind of talking and just <laughs> like muscle memory taking over. Um, I don't actually have to expose that much of this area. I've just got to kind of dig this out. There we go. So that actually should be all I need to do. Um, the trace is very, very rarely severed. It's, it's almost always just that top layer going down into the, the trace in the second layer that runs right along here. Um, so I know it doesn't look like much, uh, but I'm not, there's no point in exposing down to those traces. Um, unless it doesn't have image when I test it right now, but it's going to and this will be Probably the shortest long screw damage video I will ever make and uh, <laughs> I guess the the downside to this whole video for me at least is all of you people out there watching it are now going to know how to fix some of these easily, and I'm going to naturally end up getting less of them. Because I love it when long screw damage is that easy. All right, well, we've got, well, there's no way you're gonna be able to see. We've got image, but we've got no backlight. So now we need to start looking at what are the problems with the backlight circuit. Maybe this isn't going to be such a short video. Um, long screw damage is not going to be a problem with the backlight circuit. Uh, so this is the backlight anode. And eh, looks like that may be the problem. Looks like that got a little bit hot. Usually the underfill doesn't pick away this easily. And I can kind of see like that doesn't look like a factory joint there. That kind of looks like, I don't know, just there's something off about it. It's kind of discolored a little bit. So, oh man, how great would it be if this was just the backlight filter and I don't have to rebuild the entire backlight circuit. It would be very awesome. That's, that's how awesome it would be. It would be super awesome. Oh, wrong. <laughs> These are the probes that I was about to use. They're, they're my old ones that I need to put away so I stop grabbing them. These are my like giant probes that I just filed down because I didn't have any needle tip probes. <laughs> they're like my first ones. Uh, and these are, these are my replacements. But uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of making the tools that you need when you don't have them. Um, so I have a lot of kind of like just shit that I've made because I needed it and couldn't afford or didn't have the right tool. And uh, there we go. That should be beeping. And it's not. So, all right. This is still going to be a short video. All right. Now, this backlight filter. Man, this is... These are really tough to change. It's a very high level of difficulty. You have to be very, very skilled and practiced 
to be able to do this kind of uh, this kind of a repair here. Don't try this at home. Where are my 6S backlight filters? I would have had it ready for the video, but I didn't expect to do backlight. I expected to expose that trace and be done with it. Where are you? I just did one. Oh, yeah, you're over with the BGA chips. Hiding in with the BGA chips. All right. So if anybody out there does this kind of work and is like tired of constantly having to like source every single little part that you could possibly need for this job, um, I have been putting together kits for our practical board repair school in New York. Um, and I, I've worked with Jason Gann of microsolderingsupply.com to offer these kits to the general public. Um, so they have 277 pieces currently. Um, I kind of, I update the, the what's in it and the quantities, um, you know, as new repairs become more common. Um, so you know, it's got 6S backlight filters in it now where like six months ago or a year ago, it didn't have that. Um, and, you know, as we start to see more common failures, I'll add more parts for newer phones. Um, but anyways, uh, I think it's like listed for $3.99 on his website and just has a ton of parts. It has basically everything that I have used more than two or three times in the past year. Um, so it's got like connectors, backlight filters, diodes, IC chips, um, uh, capacitors. Uh, yeah, so if you do this kind of work and you're tired of having to source all the little shit you need, and you feel like dropping 400 bucks on a one-time buy of a big kit that you just refill as you need it, uh, just go on over to microsolderingsupply.com and order one of the microsoldering starter kits. All right, let's see if this boots up with backlight now. Bam, done. Where's it at? There we go. Turn the light off so you can see it. There we go, solved iPhone 6, long screw damage in the center hole, plus backlight. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.